Hello, everyone. What a crazy world we live in. I'll bet that everyone in this room knows what ED is, erectile dysfunction. You do because it has proven profitable to pour millions into making you aware of it. But there is another ED out there into which millions have also been poured to keep a secret, and that is endocrine disruption. Corporations discourage the use of the words and testing for endocrine disruption because they produce and sell products that contain chemicals that interfere with the endocrine system and do not want you to know that these chemicals are in the products found in your homes, offices, schools, and automobiles and have penetrated every environment, including the womb, on this planet. Although some manufacturers want you to believe that the chemicals and products they produce are safe, there is a growing body of health literature that suggests otherwise. Let's go back to the early 1940s, at the end of World War II, when DDT and a long list of other chlorinated pesticides were put on the market by huge chemical companies converting to peacetime products. Each year, more and more cheap chemicals derived from the byproducts of processing crude oil and natural gas entered the market. Soon, these fossil fuel-derived plastics became the choice for construction material, phasing out the use of steel in building materials, turning up in planes, automobiles, high-impact sporting equipment, and in home building materials, packaging, and practically every consumer product on the market. They are used as fire retardants, lubricants, detergents, and in cosmetics, toiletries, toys, and clothing, we live in a plastic world. Endocrine disruptors have been called stealth chemicals because they fly below the government's toxicological tests to protect human health and below the radar of most doctors in their clinical practice. At extremely low concentrations, they cause no visible health impairment at the time of exposure, but instead, cause effects that are not expressed until years later. But if exposure takes place before birth, they can cause irreversible lifetime disorders. We now face a pandemic of disorders in the Northern Hemisphere. There is sufficient evidence from human and laboratory animal studies to suggest that these disorders could, in part, be the result of prenatal exposure to endocrine-disrupting chemicals. Before the 1950s, they were, these were rare disorders. But since the 1970s, all of these disorders began to increase. Think about this. Diabetes increased by 90% between 1998 and 2008. And it is predicted that one in three Americans and one in two minorities born from now on will develop diabetes in their lifetime. One in 150 children born has an autism spectrum disorder, and among boys, the odds are one in 59. For both diabetes and autism, the rate of incidence keeps increasing each year with no sign of tapering off. Approximately one in 125 boys are born with hypospadias, a condition where the urethra does not open at the end of the penis. As early as 1992, Danish medical doctors shocked the world when they reported a 50% drop in sperm count in the Northern Hemisphere over the previous 50 years. And several years later, they reported a syndrome of male health and reproductive problems that can be traced back to damage in the womb. Today in the US, we are spending more money on treating diabetes than on education. We are producing fewer and fewer tax-paying citizens. We are producing more and more children with learning disabilities and serious social problems. We are now moving into the fourth generation of individuals exposed to endocrine-disrupting chemicals in the womb. The statistics tell us that something is wrong with the human condition, that males are targeted, 
that time is getting short. What we need immediately is a crash program in inner space research. It must be the most important research program in the 21st century and funded accordingly. Let's face it, the womb environment must be cleaned up if we are going to have enough fully functioning individuals with the cognition, steadfastness, leadership ability, and courage to place human health above the bottom line and take back government from corporations in order to solve this problem. We need leaders who will take ED out of the closet and who can see the link between the global pandemic of irreversible disorders and the dire need to find alternatives to fossil fuels. So if there is only one message you take away from this lecture, I want it to be that a vast number of widely dispersed fossil fuel derived chemicals are altering how our children are constructed before they are born and how they behave and function in adulthood and could be posing a more imminent threat than climate change to the survival of humans and all living organisms on Earth.